Hi guys, welcome to Code Bashers. Guys, in this video, we will we will be discussing stereotype annotations. So, in stereotype annotations, at the repository, service, and controller, these three annotations we'll be discussing today. And guys, this is the third video for our Spring Boot annotation series. Okay, I hope you are following this series as of now. Okay, so if you are a beginner in Spring Boot or you are preparing for the interviews for Spring Boot, then this series will be definitely helpful for you. So make sure that you follow this series from starting till end. We will be covering basic to advanced level annotations. So guys, if you are new to this channel, make sure to subscribe it so that you can get to know the latest updates that are happening on this channel, whether it is regarding this, in, uh, this Spring Boot series or whether it is regarding the hiring updates that we post on our channel. So I, I hope you are present on this channel. So guys, now let's start this video and before starting the video, please hit the like button as well as the subscribe button for this channel. Okay, so guys, the stereotype annotation. Stereotype annotations are used to indicate the roles of the classes in the application. So there are large amount of classes that are present in our enterprise application. So to know, to increase the readability only, we are using the stereotype annotations. So controller, service and repository, these are the three types of stereotype annotations. There are more and stereotype annotations, but these are mainly used annotations and are used to define the roles of those classes so that readability can increase. Okay, so these stereotype annotations are nothing but an extension to component annotation that we have seen in the previous videos. Okay, and like let's just see that each uh, for which role each annotation is used. So at that controller is used on classes which are directly used to handle HTTP requests. So while we are making APIs using Spring Boot application, so the class where directly there will be the first encounter with the HTTP request, it will be the controller class. Okay. Then next is the at the rate service annotation. This annotation is used on the classes which are responsible for having the business logic. So any of the processing logic. So first the uh, request comes to controller, then through controller it goes to service class for further processing and logic writing. Okay, then once all things are done, then it goes to the class that is the repository class. So the repository annotation is used on the classes which are responsible for having the database operation. So once the processing has been done in the service class, the data goes to the repository class and through repository class only we are doing operations on the database like saving, deleting and updating. So this is how the entire code flows goes from controller where the first HTTP request comes and then through controller it goes to service for the further logic writing and processing of that request and then at last it goes to repository that all the processing that we have done now it needs to be saved into the database therefore repository layer or repository annotation is used on the classes which are responsible for dealing with the database so i hope these stereotype annotations are clear to you now let's just move towards the editor so that we can see a quick flow about all these annotations and how the flow is going Okay, so guys, now let's just quickly make new packages for a controller, service and repository. And then we will move ahead with the code and we will see how the actual flow goes. So first just make the controller package. Okay, and inside controller what we'll have, we will have test controller class. Okay, test controller class will be there. Now let's just make our service package first. Okay inside this all the logics will go and inside this service package we will have a new we will have a new java class that is test service class and as i have told you this server this service class will do it will have entire logic writing okay next we have the package called repository repository and what this repository class will do let's just have first class created that is test repository and what will this class have it will have the connection with the database okay so guys now let's see see we have our test controller class we have test service class and test repository class i am telling you again controller is the one which will handle the http request service is the one which will be writing the logic and repository will be one which will be handling all the database operations so as of now what we are doing like we are not doing actual database save or we are not actually handling the uh, http request via controller like this is just to show you the flow how the flow goes and how dependency injection and how all the components are involved inside a particular java application in the basic code flow so let's just uh, simply make this test repository as a component as we have discussed what is a component in previous videos okay now we will have the method inside this uh, which will return a string 
so i'm not actually going into saving anything inside the database since we do not have any connection as of now it's just the basic flow we have to cover and the connection part also we will come come up with in future videos but as of now just like simple simple methods we are we will be defining in controller service and repository and we'll be seeing the flow of the code okay so we have this method public string uh, in repository what we'll have uh, we will call, uh, call it as a handle db operation okay handle db okay what this method will do it will return a string that is called i am in test repository okay so now no, now we know how the code flows so it flows from test controller to test service to test from test service to test repository so now we are in test service so the control flows from test service to test repository it means that we want a test repository object inside this test uh, service class so we will declare that object so private test uh, repository test repository and we all know that once when we require this object so what we will do uh, since test service is dependent on test repository then we will do dependency injection via auto wire okay test repository and we have a test repository we have marked it as a component so good so now this test repository we have inside our test service class now let's just declare one method uh, one method we will declare inside this test service class it will be uh, handle logic okay handle logic and let's just first print a print out System dot out dot print ln. Uh, we will print we are in service class. Okay. Now uh, in the end, what we'll do? We will now be calling the test repository method. And what we'll do? We will return that method uh, because that method is returning string. Therefore, our return type is string here. So return test repository object dot what is the name of the metal method it is handle db and what that handle db is returning it is returning a string so we are returning directly from here so here it is a method as return type now from test service we have gone to test repository but how we will come to test service we will come to test service via test controller i have told you earlier also let me just first i miss this test service we will make as a component okay and now test controller coming to test controller i have already told you that when we are when there is an api http request that we are coming it will first come to controller then to service then to repository the these annotations okay sorry i have made a blunder in this particular thing see i have told you that these repository service and controller are just the naming convention so that our uh, application becomes more readable so in in this what we are doing we will not give directly add the red component annotation but we'll give on the repository class we will give add the red repository annotation okay so this is just for the readable thing that yes this particular java class is used for handling the database operation similarly is the service thing service class we will not give add the red component annotation on the service class we will give add the red service annotation because it will make it more readable that okay this is a service class this will be used to handle the logical part okay handle the logic behind the uh, processing that we'll be doing in our application similarly going to controller so dependency injection will work same way because as i've told you these annotations are nothing but but an extension to component only so therefore dependency injection will happen in the similar way only and now going to controller i have told you whenever the http request comes it will be first handled by the controller then to service and then to repository so on the controller what we'll do we will give the annotation as controller it will tell spring that yes all the http coming request will be handled by this class it will make it more readable now from controller where will we going we will be going to the service class so therefore first of all we will have to inject this service class inside this controller class so again we will be de declaring it test service okay test service here now what we'll do we will be doing auto wiring so that dependency injection happens automatically and at runtime inside this test controller class we will get the object of this test service class let's just make new function public uh okay we will make it string only and handle request we will do okay and inside this class let's just first do system dot out system oh sorry system dot out dot print ln we are in controller 
okay and then what we'll do we will return and what we are returning we will be calling the test service class okay test service dot handle logic this method we will be calling using the test service object okay so as i told you this controller class is used to handle the http request but i am currently not going into that thing that how the uh, uh how the mapping from that URI to this method will be done and how actually the method will how actually the data will be getting saved inside the repository inside the database using this repository class I am not going there just to tell you a brief flow from controller to service to repository I am writing this okay now we have our controller and we have this annotation controller over it so this is nothing but these annotation nothing but just an extension to the component annotation now we will go to the Spring Boot application main method and we know that application context contains all the ob objects that are that should be managed by spring so we will what we will ask we will ask for the object of test controller class so application context dot get bean and inside this we will pass test controller dot class that we want the object of this class and here we will pass test controller and yes test controller is load this and let just again print system dot out uh, dot print ln and what will be printing test controller dot handle request okay now let just run the application and entire flow because we have uh, we have done uh, loggers here so entire flow that how the flow is going it will be printed here okay so you can see that from this main method we are going into this first handle request okay first we are going into the into this handle request method so therefore we are in controller is printed so after this is printed we are going to the service class in the handle logic method okay so inside this handle logic we are in service class is printed so we are in service class is printed and then after this we are from the service class we are going to this repository class where handle db operations will be kept and there we are returning i am in test repository so in the end what is printing i am in test repository is getting printed so this is how all these things are happening this is how the flow is going and i have not gone in detail that how actually the repository class will be saving into the database that will be coming in future videos similarly i have not covered that how the controller will be mapped how the controller methods will be mapped to a specific uri of the incoming http request i have not done that just to show you the flow and yes and to make it clear that whenever you are writing the apis the flow will be starting from the controller and all the uri based mappings to the method will be done here okay so i hope now these uh, annotations are clear to you and what are their role they are just used to define spring that what this class or package will do and it becomes it makes the code more readable that where in which all sections api api requests are there in which all sections in the code database connections are there and in which all sections the actual logic is written okay so these annotations are used for this purpose so i hope i have made my point and yes again these are just the extension to the component annotation only so i hope all these three annotations are clear to you thank you for watching this video and do follow this series for more things because we are so by slowly by slowly we are covering many annotations and we are moving towards the advanced level so thank you for watching this video. Do hit the like and subscribe button for this channel.